Hi, I'm Tim Belcher. Welcome back to the channel. I've been wanting to make some laser etched leather hat patches for a while now. If you're like me, you've seen these posts all over social media, but what's often missing are some of the answers to the most common questions. What type of adhesive are you using? Where do you get your supplies? What are your laser settings? How much was that hat press? So in this video, I'm going to show you all of those, some tips and tricks that I learned along the way, some mistakes I made so that you don't have to, and hopefully you'll find some things in this video that you've not seen anywhere else. So this is how I made it. Let's get to the build. Okay, if you remember that Hobby Lobby roll of tooling leather from the last video, let's cut a couple of sheets out of it. And for this video, I'm going to start from scratch and dye my own leather. Remember this rule, with dye you can only ever make leather darker. That's just the way it works. And I'm going to dye one blank by hand and then I'm going to show you the best and easiest way I've found to dye leather to date. First, hand dyeing, and I have to say I absolutely hate doing this. It just doesn't ever really work well for me. It just never gives great results. Now this is easy on small items, but large panels is just much harder to get consistent. The simple idea is take a small sponge and try your best to lay down a light but consistent stroke of dye. I like the idea of going one direction, top to bottom, and then rotating and repeating three times. However, this was a light saddle tan choice. And always when I hand dye, it ends up way darker than I wanted it before it looks at all uniform. Even after rotating it all the way around, it's still very streaked. So I attempt to even it out with even more dye. And the final result is certainly not a light saddle tan brown. Now for a yellow dye. And for all my dye, I recommend Fibbing's Pro Dye. There really is just no substitute there. But for yellow, I've used this in a previous project on a no-stitch leather purse for my wife. You can see my previous videos. And there I dip-dyed the panels in a large plastic pan. But what I'm about to show you is simply the cheapest and best way I've found yet to spray leather dye. This is a $20 portable electric spray water gun from Amazon. I think it's meant to spray water on plants or something. It has an adjustable spray pattern and supposedly lasts up to two hours on a charge. In previous videos, I've used airbrushes and an HVLP sprayer to lay down my leather dye. But now for just $20, if this lasts just a few projects, this is a huge win. Just remember that Fibbing's Pro Dye is an oil-based dye and an alcohol suspension. So you're aerosolizing alcohol and oil. Do it outside, do it away from electronics, do it away from any ignition source, mask up, stay upwind, and remember, this stuff goes absolutely everywhere. But, look how well this lays down dye. So for those keeping count, my light brown sheet looks dark brown, and my yellow looks a little like light brown. So we're off to a good start. I've said this in past videos, but I think masking is a huge waste of time. Instead, whenever possible, just finish your leather first, then the soot cleans off fairly easily. And I think this project will show that off in some significant detail. So for me, that's usually leather balm, which is a mixture of moisturizer and atom wax. And you could also use resiline, which is an acrylic clear coat finish, or even tan coat, which is a resin based finish. For balm, it's simply wipe on, wait for a bit to dry and buff it to a shine. And you'll really see why this is important soon. And in all those posts about these patch hats, I think the most common question I see is what adhesive do you use? And that gets a surprising amount of different answers. But if you see answers from the ones that really do production of these hats, the answer is more often than not something called hide bond, hide bond adhesive sheets. This is the exact and only application these are made for. And before this video, I had never tried it. But I think even in my limited amount of trial, this is my solution going forward. This stuff simply works. No paid promotion here in this video at all. It's just my experience. Now you need to order this through Hidebond. There's no Amazon, no eBay, and no instructions, at least in the box. But the ones online are sort of funny. It basically says, cut a square to fit, get the iron as hot as you can and press it. And then says, don't worry if you overpress it, press it too long, etc. It's all good. Just get it to stick. I had some doubts, but that actually is sort of the way it worked out. I used a sheet of butcher paper and a Teflon sheet to distribute the heat more evenly, 
and to protect the iron from the adhesive, but the process was relatively straightforward. I should have gone right to the laser and cut my patches, but instead I waited a day and the dye tends to shrink and dry out the leather a bit, and in this case only on one side, so my panels potato chipped a bit, and that wrinkled the backing paper some, but it wasn't anything some magnets couldn't fix on the laser bed. And speaking of lasers, let's briefly go over my laser settings. Now I spent some time doing some prototypes before I started rolling the camera, and I wound up on these settings for my laser etching. Now I'm using an OM Tech 80 watt, so your settings are likely going to vary, but I'm using a vector fill at 300 millimeters per second with 18 max power and 15 min power. For the cut pass, I'm using 35 millimeters per second with a max power of 70 and a min of 68. I do not use line and fill, as I find the line tends to overburn small details. And I'm also using a crosshatch pattern, so effectively doing this etch twice, once across and once up and down. I'm also using air assist, somewhere around 10 PSI, and that's too much, and a large source of the leather dust you see forming on the patch. But I run air assist no matter what to protect my lens. I don't want soot coming back up that nozzle. Each patch takes me about 8 minutes, and I could certainly at least cut that in half, testing higher speeds and more power, but I was only cutting a dozen or so. Now let's go through my cleaning process in a little depth. This is the Merca patch, and at first it doesn't look very good. I used to say to just use a damp rag until I saw a single comment that said use a dry rag first. And because of the finish, that dry rag gets the vast majority of the soot right off. I do come back with a damp rag and try to polish only the top grain portions a bit. And you can see the difference after just wiping the leather. Now it's time for one more coat of leather balm, and this is a fairly heavy coat. You can see it applied here. And finally, after 10 minutes or so, I'll buff it to a shine. And this is the final product. You can really see the precision details in the star field, and this should be fairly well protected. Here's another one I designed from scratch, and this one is for myself and some friends, and has some detailed graphic elements around the fonts and some really small details around the sunbeams. You can see it go from off the laser, through the wipe down, through another coat of leather balm, and again, I think the detail at the end is fantastic. And these are just some from the yellow panels we prepared. I did want to try that darker brown, so again, it's off to the laser. I don't see a lot of good color variations on the leather patches that I see online but I think this is one of those areas where someone could really create some unique combination. I have blues, purples, reds, all sorts of dyes. And freshly off the laser, they certainly don't look very well, but after the same finishing process, here they are against the yellow. I did use some black antiquing gel off camera on the River Tours patch just to test it in this process and darken those etched areas even more. This is just sort of a shoe polish and you've seen me use it on my channel before. In the end, I think both colors worked really well. So we have some patches with adhesive backing on them and now we need a hat press. This is the Cricut hat press. It retails for about $150 on Amazon, but there we have many choices of single platinum hat presses. And these range from $125 all the way up to several thousand, each with a variety of four-star reviews and some one-star reviews. I think the holy grail of professional hat presses is the Hottronics Dual Platinum Presses. These presses heat from the bottom and the top and apply programmatic pressure, something very professional. These are going to set you back anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. But if you're like me and are only doing a few or want to make some money from them before making a huge investment, you may want something that could do a variety of hat shapes and I wanted to just dip my toe in the water here, so I chose the Cricut. And this is simply a curved iron and a forming buck stuffed with walnut shells. It's controlled by a very easy to use and intuitive app and it takes only a minute or so to get it up and running. This is my first time using this. The instructions for heating on the Hydebond website refer to that expensive Hottronics machine and state 280 degrees on top, 320 on the bottom, and medium pressure for 40 seconds. There are no built-in settings on the Cricut for leather hat patches, 
So I believe I set this press to 340 or so and just gave it a shot. I set the time for 60 seconds or so. There's an optional preheat and I selected the same temp to preheat the hat for 15 seconds. I should mention that this was a test hat, one I didn't care about ruining, and that I have a little butcher paper and a Teflon sheet to help distribute the heat. The butcher paper was there because I used a wax-based finish and I didn't want any wax transfer to the Teflon sheet. Now this worked, and by that I mean the patch stuck, but the end result was not great. It pressed the patch into the hat, but I had deformed the hat with too much pressure on the buck. The end result was a hat that had some creases in its shape. Let me show you a second attempt here and a second failure. Now this is a Richardson 112, a very common hat for this type of patch, and one I didn't want to ruin. Here I went a bit longer with the heat, and for some reason a little harder on the pressure, and I also turned the buck sideways to make it sort of longer and provide more support under that front panel. Because this patch is long and rectangular, I'm adding high temp tape and measuring carefully to make sure that it's placed correctly on the hat itself. I think I was trying to get this patch to adhere in one go. That's sort of a natural instinct for me and I think a wrong one. The end result was that I again deformed the hat while I pressed it, not to mention I absolutely cooked the patch. The patch pressed into the shape of the hat leaving the creases again, it curled the edges and it even deformed the bottom of the patch a bit. So let me show you what was going on without the heat press on and without a hat at first. Now this buck is a much more complicated shape than I originally realized. It has a long side and a shorter side, and in each direction there's a slightly more flat side and a slightly more curved side. This is so it can fit a variety of hats. I found the shorter, more round side to fit the Richardson better. However, when I place the iron on the buck, you'll notice it doesn't exactly fit the curve. The edges can rock back and forth before they make contact. I think I was trying to compensate for that by applying more pressure. What I was actually doing was deforming the buck and deforming the hat in the process. Now let's look at that with a hat on the buck. I'll remove the cardboard and flip the sweatband down and position the hat on the buck. And then I'll tightly close the strap in the back. I can check and feel the support on the front edge. And then when you look closely when I apply too much pressure, you can see the buck deform and also the hat. It may be hard to see on camera. What I should have been doing is just running a cycle in the center, trying to get the center of the patch to adhere. And then I can slide the iron around the buck to grab the edges. The only pressure I'm applying is enough to simply bend the patch. I'm letting the heat and minimal pressure do the work on the adhesive. Once I got the feel for the amount of pressure, it was sort of off to the races on the rest of the hats. There certainly is a bit of a learning curve with this, but after only a few, these can be knocked out fairly quickly and I think the results become much more predictable. The final custom settings I chose for the Cricut hat press were to preheat for about 10 seconds at 315 degrees and at that same temperature then to press for 40 seconds. I would then check and rotate the press to grab any edges for an additional 15, maybe 20 seconds at most. And this left me with a hat that looked great and a patch that was going nowhere. And that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. If you found any of this helpful, please hit that subscribe button. It really is the best way to help a small YouTube channel. And one last thing here, in my last video I promised to give away one of these no stitch leather purses to a subscriber by choosing a random comment. And that comment is by Sherry B. Congrats Sherry, please reach out to me on the about page of my channel and I'll get this off to you. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.